You're absolutely right, Dan, I think, to preface your own opinion there by saying that we absolutely mustn't get into the realm of the class warfare and the politics of envy, which I think some commentators definitely are, by the way, Dan. So really important, and I'm so glad that you said that. But it's really interesting. The, the media have just totally done a three, six, uh, 180 on Rishi Sunak, going from dishy Rishi to something smells somewhat fishy, right? It's It's been incredible. And with Rishi now saying he's doing what the Prime Minister did during the wallpaper gate scandal. Remember that, Dan? It feels like about 10 years ago now, <laughs> but it really wasn't. Where he, re he actually has now referred himself to Lord Geit, who is the Prime Minister's independent advisor on ministerial interests. And he's going to actually look in to Rishi Sunak's finances and see whether or not everything was declared and everything's hunky dory and all of the rest of it. But, Dan, this has actually had the effect of ensuring that the conservative grassroots, and you see this in the conservative news websites, polls, where Rishi Sunak has gone from hero to zero, right? As you said there, the Eat Out to Help Out campaign, he was regularly polling as one of the most popular cabinet ministers around that table. I dare say Boris Johnson was getting quite worried. He was green with envy at the idea that this man was dishing out these, well, not just food, but dishing out free lockdown money and becoming immensely popular in doing so. But Boris needn't have worried because now I think Rishi Sunak's political career is on a very thin ice. He's dashed up here to Darlington. I'm in Durham, but he's dashed up to Darlington in an attempt to show that he was able to get on with the job of running the nation's finances. I mean, Darren, I do I'm... wonder if sometimes there's going to be a bit of uh, schadenfreude when it comes to Sunak from the folk at number 10 Downing Street, because, of course, Rishi was not supportive of Boris, particularly during the party gate scandal. He didn't want to speak publicly. He was certainly tepid in his endorsement of whether, whether the PM uh, should remain in the job. And this is where I think people get Boris Johnson very wrong, actually, because Boris has been the complete opposite with Rishi. He has given him fulsome and wholesome public support. And I just wonder if Rishi now regrets the way that he chose to deal with that Partygate scandal. Well, I mean, he was very much on the up then, wasn't he, Dan? It was very much in his interest for Boris Johnson to fall because, of course, the natural successor would have been Rishi Sunak. It basically would have been a coronation, I think, yeah. Dan. But that now... Labour are actually managing to chip away at the Tory brand on this, around this idea that a man who has increased taxes, let's not forget, taxes that haven't been this high since a socialist was in power. And th with that national insurance increase, people are saying, well, hang on a minute. It's assumed that Sunak's yeah. wife could have benefited from this non-DOM status so Labour are able to really use this. Yeah. And I understand all of that. I understand how friend. bad this looks politically at a time when Rishi is rising taxes, which is, of course, something that I have been uh, personally opposed to. But, Darren, the key question, and I'll give you my opinion first, I don't believe that this was a deceitful decision or a sinister decision. I think you can argue it was a politically naive decision. Oh, yeah, yeah, 100 percent. I... Um, absolutely with you on that because it and i'm reminded actually of when boris johnson I, you'll remember this clip where boris johnson was handed a coffee cup by an aide right and it was a non-reusable coffee cup and of course in this day and age the net zero hype and all the rest of it you've just had a really good debate there on this very issue we're all mad with it environmentalism he was handed this coffee cup and another aide, quick as a flash, snatched the coffee cup away from him before he could be seen taking a sip from a non-environmentally friendly receptacle. Now, Rishi Sunak should have realised that his family's tax affairs, Dan, if he was any serious politician, he would have realised that this was going to make him go down like a bag of sick with the electorate because they would say, hang on a minute, is this special privileges for your family whilst the rest of us are really struggling at the minute? And I actually think he should have recognised if he was a politician worth his salt, if he was a politician 
I was just watching a documentary on Margaret Thatcher yesterday. If he was a politician like those back in those days, he would have been able to recognise that this was a live wire issue. And he's clearly just not a very good politician, I'm afraid I've concluded. So, Dan, I do think his political career, certainly his leadership bid is out of the window. No question about that. And I wouldn't be surprised if he actually stands down before the next election. That's how serious this is. Quite extraordinary for a Chancellor. Fascinating of prediction, Darren. No fascinating prediction. Of course, he did have a meteoric rise because of Boris Johnson backing him so significantly when he lost uh, his first Chancellor in Sajid Jafford. And I guess the fall could be just as brutal. But again, I'm going to warn everyone, let's not buy into the Labour narrative here. Let's not buy into the left-wing narrative. Let's not buy into the MSM narrative. If Rishi Sunak simply made an honest mistake, I think uh, he should be given a shot to clear it up. And of course, that's what the Guide Inquiry will do. Darren Grimes, thank you so much.